Can you see? I'm trying to look at So this is where our... Can anyone guess what goes there? If you said the strut, you would be right. That's right, crew. Today's episode on the Shipyard Channel is going to be a focus on our prop shaft. Philip and I had been battling an issue with this silly little key in our shaft, and we knew it was a bigger problem. We thought maybe the coupler was going to be an issue, but of course we found more once we got in there. All of this to uh, align the engine and make sure everything is properly working, and of course we run into issues along the way. So follow along as we rebed the strut, replace the cutlass bearing, engineer a new coupler, and of course, all the problems that come along with that. It'd be fun, I promise. Come on. <laughs> I forgot how much fun this is, are you ready? <laughs> I love air power tools. I'm gonna go clean up the area around the strut so we can rebed it. There we go. I'd give you a little update. I'm stuck here in the aft berth all jammed in. So that's my engine hole right there. That's how I get to the, down in there in the engine. You remember we had an issue with our transmission key, that little key that was keeping the shaft in place that would turn the coupling and all that, and um, we knew that was some kind of issue. And I'll have to interrupt Shipyard Annie for just a minute here. We battled this problem for months and months, hammering back in that little key with tons of Loctite. We always found it after a few hours running. It had wiggled out or come out entirely. Finally found a set screw, tighten that down. That didn't hold it. And please do comment on our amazing job with the seizing wire. But it actually eventually led to a really much bigger problem. And then our shaft actually started moving forward. Um, and we had the problem where it moved so far forward, it released the stuffing box and we had our, we're taking on water day. Um, so we knew we had some issues with that shaft and the key and the coupling or something, but we weren't quite sure what all was going on. Um, Brandon looked at it and just said we need a totally new coupling that ours is like warped and wobbly and allowing a lot more movement in that shaft that we should have. And um, we're just really lucky that the shaft moved forward. Like apparently if we were really hard throwing it in reverse, it could move aft like out of the back of the boat. So um, again, really lucky. And just another reason we love working alongside the guys at the yard. We learn so much from them and they teach us about the systems and how to look out for things. Like Philip and I are very in tune, but often the boat's trying to tell us something that we just don't understand. The coupler was the issue all along. And this isn't super great footage, but it does show you how much movement Brandon and the guys found in our prop shaft, even in tight inside the coupler. It just couldn't hold it. Pull it in and out. Keep going. All right, hold it. Pull it again. Okay. Aren't those guys great? And in inspecting the whole system, they of course looked at the strut, the cutlass bearing, everything. And Brandon found the strut had some wiggle, some play in it, so he decided we should rebed that too. Can you see? Totally look at So this is where our strut comes out. I'll show you. I don't even know what this looked like to pull it out. So here is uh, the fairing compound. Brandon says actual mold for this fiberglass that you're seeing probably goes back to like here and here and out. 
and then they put the strut on and then they fill in the gaps with the, the fairing compound and so that's what you're looking at here but you can see that water's been getting in there you can see kind of the holes in there so we decided to drop the strut Brandon said he just made a hole in the fairing compound no big deal and uh pulled the strut off because it had just a little bit of wiggle in it the tiniest bit and pop that off and you'll see inside Andy's job today is to clean these out take these bolts out in the engine room and clean out all the caulk and silicone it is the strut today so that's ow ow oh, i just hit my head oh man that hurt nice annie good job and the bolts for our strut are behind the engine in the engine room. Not super easy to get to, but thankfully accessible. And they weren't too bad. I was able to get them off in about 20 minutes, and we were moving on with the job. I'm down here in the engine hole cleaning up. Um, of course, anytime you remove something, you have to clean up all the junk it leaves behind, and that's like Annie's specialty, cleaning up old silicone caulk. So that's my job today. All right, crew. Where our um, strut went. There's four bolts uh, that connect the strut to the underside of the hole. You can see it's um, just right behind the engine there. It's going forward looking into the boat. And then right behind it is the manifold which we're working on too. Get the hose off to replace that. And behind that is where the quadrant would be. But our quadrant's out right now. But it is only day two in the shipyard and we are like rocking this shit out so that is really really cool and it is kind of fun to be hanging around with Brandon again. <laughs> Brandon and Shane are just awesome. <laughs> they pick on you every second of the day. Trust me. Any chance they can. Oh my god you're brilliant. Okay I could have done that. I tried to tell you. We're going to have you kind of hold that wall too. A what? Uh huh. Bulkhead or a wall? Bulkhead. Just got to take it and give it back. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. When we disassembled the prop system, we also found the cutlass bearing was pretty worn out, which was kind of surprising because we replaced it in 2014 when we put a new dripless in. Um, and that's only been four years, but we have put a lot of miles on the boat for sure. And if the prop shaft wasn't tight in there with a nice coupler, then that probably would have led to some more wear and tear on the cutlass bearing. So we decided to replace that too. Step back here. Engine down there. We're gonna do the new coupling uh, is coming. The coupling arrived today, so that's really cool. And uh, get it put on, and the rudder back up is today's project. So, and I'll let Philip explain to you our cool new design for the coupler to make sure we never have a problem with this key anymore. Oh yeah. Nice Let me see this thing. Damn, that's pretty. And then he he that's machined. Uh, I'm trying to think who. Uh, we machine this piece like here or so we can push it out. Oh, it's got a little screw a, thing. Yes. So yes. if it's stuck, no, the shaft's no, stuck, you can press it out. Wow. Oh, so that's what you use. That. Yeah. But the key, just built in. Yeah, so the key goes Shrink there. In? Ain't no key coming oh, out of this thing. Oh, nice. Oh, Man, that's beautiful. You guys, nah, so is that the coupling? Yep. So now it just needs to be primed. We don't paint the or the inside, but we're just going to prime it. And yeah, is the right. cap going there or those are just, they Pink stick out like that? They stick out that just is like the cap. that. Yep, and these That's are the four cool. screws that hold it on. He does good work. Please do it. Great, great design. <laughs> so with the help of Brandon's team and a great design by the machinist, we went from a previous coupling like this to a new one like this. Definitely more secure and is going to hold that key in. We also got some great tips from Shane so that we now know how to better do our seizing wire. Here's a tip for you. Do it Together. One more time. Explain. This, this way, uh -huh. clockwise, right? Because it wants to go left. Yeah. It, it's pulling from this side, so it's going to go try to pull it tighter. Uh -huh. This one's pulling from this side, which is clockwise. It's trying to pull it tighter. So the more they loosen, they'll tighten each other. Yeah. Well, wow. or try it, to. they're always pulling against each other to keep each other tight. That's so cool. Learn something new every day. Like Good stuff indeed, but all of this that we were doing with the prop shaft and the engine was all for alignment. Brandon's using what's called finger gauges here to make sure everything can get within one one thousandth of alignment. And the alignment of the engine was also another very difficult project for us when we ran into this. Hello from the engine room. We've got a little bit of bad news. Um, 
It's almost exactly what happened. It is exactly what happened with our um, rotten stringers under our mask step. And I made a fun little promo video of that for Brandon. For those of you who are not familiar with our rotten stringer under the mask repair, check this out. Pretty cool, right? And it was precisely because we had done that previous rotten stringer repair that this upcoming one wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, they're wood, uh, but they're glassed around on the sides, but not on top. Probably the most important area where bolts uh, go into it. Uh, but I'll show you. We've got um, some rot under the stringer that's on the starboard side of the engine. Not good. <laughs> but it was right under the uh, water pump for the raw water cooling system, so it didn't really surprise us. Water had been leaking there uh, occasionally over the years, and thankfully it was just a very small portion of the stringer uh, that was compromised. Everything else was good to go. And the really cool thing was, uh, even the dig out and the, the rebuild, I did most of this project about 90% by myself. Put the square, that on top of the square. Move your finger so I can read it. All right, now put it long ways. The light, same light where the engine's going. There you go. Let me get that line leveled out. Hold it right there. So when it's got the arrow pointing at it. But working in that tight space, trying to cut very nice 90 degree angles for the fill-in was not easy. I'm gonna cut it out, make a template, and fill it up. Let me show you what's going on. First, let me show you Shane Blood. Shane Blood down here. I'm trying to make this cut. Oh, I'm gonna scooch in here for you. So here's the rod that we found that I dug out. And then you see we're cutting. Cut that piece right out and fill it in with a CUSA board. But the fantastic news is port looks great. So the port side is nice and strong. Or right there, that's just where the bolt was, but you can see the actual cut in the bolt, so it's perfect. And uh, not the worst news in the world. Well, welcome to the engine room. <laughs> Can you see?
we laid a lot of resin down in between our CUSA board blocks and Brandon also had the good idea to put some between the fiberglass walls and clamp those back up so they would seal back against the wood on both of the stringers under the engine. He also recommended while we were there to go ahead and add a few extra gussets for support to make sure the engine has all the stability possible. So we added a large one on, this is the starboard side forward, right under our battery charger there and next to you can see the new engine mount. And then we also put a small one as well on port with drain holes so each one can allow water if it needs to go to the bilge. You'll see our new engine mount right there too. We had to buy all three new engine mounts to realign the engine. Brush, right? Yeah, just dip the brush in there. Yeah. Awesome. You're the man, Philip. Oh yeah, making it happen up here. Crazy. We're gonna have to call this Philip's mixing glass mixing service. <laughs> More please, Annie. It was a good yeah, bit of work, but definitely yeah. worth it to make sure our engine is nice and stable. And the alignment was super important, so we had to get uh, the engine mounts, you know, securely mounted and in place. Annie was a little excited about it. <laughs> but with that work done, Shane and Brandon then set to the very long task of aligning the engine, crank by crank. Twelve quarter turns. And with that, we were able to get the strut rebedded, get the prop back in the boat, and let Brandon get in there with the fine-tuned feeler gauges to make sure everything was on track. It was a good bit of work. You guys tired yet? Well, we got plenty more in store.